Hello and welcome to DTWGED Prep. Welcome. Okay, in today's video, we're going to be looking at quadratic equations word problem. All right, I have done equations word problem, uh, but haven't done quadratic equation word problem. Okay, so how to you know go from all these words to forming your quadratic equations, then also solving it either by factoring. Okay, so it depends on you. Okay, so here um this is our first question sorry please before we go further please please do subscribe to this youtube channel help us to grow and give this video a thumbs up as it helps promote it on youtube and um as you subscribe click on the notification bell so you're notified every time we upload a video for you uh if you need um, summary notes study guides practice questions the gd math formula sheets please you can do all this you can download them freely get this notes freely from dtwgdprep.com you can also join our facebook group i am the admin and owner of the group so you can join it twenty three thousand members wonderful community to support you okay you want to ask questions about the gd just drop it there and definitely there'll be someone to help you okay so all the links i'll leave in the video description box of this video if you require one-on-one -on -one tutoring you can also contact me okay so uh our first question goes here it says the area of a rectangle is given by the expression this which is a quadratic expression equation uh expression and it says an expression equal to the length is this what expression is equal to the width of the rectangle so if the area is given by this expression now a rectangle what's the area of a rectangle length times the width is equal to the area okay so it says if the area is this so if a is 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. All right. An expression equal to the length is this. So the length is 3x plus 4. All right. So we're looking for the width. That's what we're looking for. And we know that if this is the answer, right, we have to look for the second factor. It's like factoring because this is the quadratic equation. You have one factor. What's the second factor? So all we need to do is just to factor. So we have to factor this guy. I hope we remember how to factor. If you don't, please do, um, I think it should be two videos before this. Try to watch that, factoring quadratic equations, okay, of this format. format. All right, so here, to factor this, what do we do? We do six times minus four. It gives us negative 24. Then we find the factors of negative 24. We have 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. These are the factors of 24. Now, out of this factor, what two factors can we add or subtract that will give us a positive 5? My bet is this and this. So we can do a positive 8, negative 3. And that would give us a positive 5. And also, apart from adding and subtracting, when you multiply them, they should give you a negative 24. So when we do positive 8 multiplied by negative 3, it gives us a negative 24. So this is how you get your two factors. All right. I've explained this in depth in that video where I solved, I think, over 10 questions. So if you watch that video, any questions on quadratic equations, I know, I'm sure you would get it. You won't miss it. All right. So these two factors must, these two rules must uh, confirm with our factors. The two factors you select from the, the factors of 24, when you add or subtract, should give us 5. And when you multiply, it should give you negative 24. Don't forget the negative. Where did this negative come about? It is 6 times negative 4. That's how we got a negative 24. Okay? So, these are two factors. So, we now put it in here. We have 6x squared. I always advise start with the bigger number. So, you make it 8x, then minus 3x, minus 4. I'm sure you'll be asking, where did this x come from? It's from here. So, you will replace positive 5x to these two factors. So, because... Positive 8x minus 3x is 
positive 5x. So replace it so we can now factor out. All right. So remember GCF, your greatest common factor. I have done a video on that. Please do watch it also. It will help you if you are confused about how to factor in algebra. <coughs> Excuse me. So here, to factor this, what would come out from the numbers, you can bring out a 2. From the variables, you can bring out an x. When you divide by 2x, we're going to be left with 3, and this, we're going to be left with 1x. Plus, divide this by 2x, 2 would uh, go in 8, 4 times, x would cancel, x, you are left with 4. Okay? Then the next factor, how to factor this? 1, we can, you know, 1 is a factor of this, and this, this are, that's the greatest common factor between negative 3 and negative 4. So we have negative 1. You take this sign here, you put your 1, and you open the parentheses, divide this by negative 1, divide this by negative 1. The negative 3x divided by negative 1 will give us a positive 3. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 will give us a positive 4. So this and this is common, so you bring it out. And finally, we have 2x minus 1. All right. So one of the factors is 3x plus 4, which we have here. Correct. So the second factor is this, which is our width. So our width is this particular expression. Okay. And to confirm the answer, when you multiply these two factors, you should get this. Okay. To confirm. All right. So that's how you solve for this. Now let's go to the next question. Number two says, find the number that when added to its square equals 72. Find the number. Let that number be x. So find the number that when added to its square, to its square, that's the number square. Added means positive. So as you can see, we're interpreting this word problem. So find the number that's x. That's when added to a square x plus x square added to a square. That's when added to a square. So the number added to a square equals 72. Do you see that? So now we have to rearrange this now. So this is a quadratic equation. We have to rearrange it to look like this. Okay, the standard. So I'll bring 72 here. This guy here would be in front. So, and it's positive, so good. So we have x squared plus, this is also positive, x taking 72 here becomes a negative 72 equal to zero. So we have a quadratic equation here. So we have to factor. So this is quite easy to factor than the first one, which I have also treated. Okay, please try to watch that video. I would also arrange, curate all this video on our website in a course. Please do register, I will leave the link to the course. So do register on the course uh, so you are notified when I'm done, um, you know, arranging all the videos. Okay. So here you put X here, you put X here. Then this negative 72. You know, this is like there's an invisible one here. So when you do one, just like the way we did the first one, we did six times negative four. So here there's a one. One times negative 72 is a negative 72. Right. So we have to look for factors of negative 72. We have 1, we have 2, we have uh, 3, I think 4 can go, right? We have 4, we have uh, 6, we have uh, uh, what else again? There's several numbers. We have 8, right? We have 9, uh, we have 12, we have 18, we have 36, tell me if I missed anyone, then 72. So out of all these factors, what two factors can we use that would give us a positive, because here, the coefficient of x here is 1, that will give us a positive 1, and also when we multiply, it should give us a negative 72. My best bet is 8 and 9. If we do a positive 9, negative 8, it gives us a positive 1. And a positive 9 times negative 8 gives us what? A negative 72. So it follows and confirms conforms to our rule. Okay? So uh, we just add here positive 9, 
negative eight. You can see this is quite easy than the other one that we have to now start, you know, looking for the GCF, the greatest common factor. So we have factored this. So we have equal to zero. So it says find that number. We should find the number X. So from here we have X. So this is just factor. So when it says find, it means we should solve. So to solve, we do X plus nine equal to zero and x minus 8 equal to 0. So this would give us x is equal to negative 9. Here, yeah, x is equal to positive 8. So our answers for x is what? Um, negative 8 and negative 9. Okay, so these are answers for x. So here, we can just use the positive answer, which is 8. And let us confirm if... It's going to give us any of them should actually confirm to confirm to this our uh, equation that we set from the beginning if we do eight that will be eight plus eight square that is eight plus 64 and that will give us what 72 are you with me if you do negative nine negative nine plus uh, negative nine square that's 81 so that's negative nine plus 81 and that will give us a positive 72 so we are correct, okay? Always try to, if you can, quickly confirm your answers, especially in the quadratic equations and also you know um, if you made a mistake in the signs, just in case you're not too good with um, understanding your signs and all that, always try to confirm your, your answer, all right? If you don't understand your sign rules, how to add, subtract, sign numbers, please do watch, I've done a video on this please also watch this all right it will be curated i think that's the first thing on the algebra course on the website that's the first thing you have to watch all right so please do watch that video so number three says two times the square of a number added to five times the number equals negative two what is the number so it says here two times that's two times the square of a number let the number be x so the square will be x square added that's plus to five times the number the number is still x equals to negative two so here we have two x square plus this times this is five x equal to negative two so we take the negative two here it becomes what two x square plus five x then plus two equal to zero. Now we can solve this quadratic equation. So we do two times two, that gives us four. So what are positive four? So what are the factors of four? We have one, two, and four, all right? And what two factors would give us a positive five? And when we multiply, it should give us a positive four. So we can use a positive one, positive four, that gives us a positive five. And a positive one times positive four gives us what? A positive four, all right? So it follows our two rules. So we put it in here, we place this 5x with positive 4x and positive, uh, I would have just dropped x, but let me just put 1x, okay? So you follow me <laughs> in case you are confused when I remove the x, okay? Equal to zero. So let's factor this. <clears throat> to factor this, we can bring out the two. We can also bring out the x, divide by 2x, this cancels this, 1x cancels this 1x, we're left with just x here, plus this divided by 2x, this cancels this, we have 2, and x cancels this as 1, so we we'll just have 2, okay? Plus, what is common? What's the common, greatest common factor between these two? It's 1, a positive 1, okay? It takes the sign here, and we're going to be left with x plus 2 equal to 0, so this and this is the same, so we factor out, it becomes 2x plus 2. Then we have what's left here, 2x plus 1 equal to 0. <clears throat> so we're asked to find the number, so it means we have to solve this. So to solve this, we have to equate x plus 2 equal to 0 and 2x plus 1 equal to 0. This will give us x equal to negative 2. This will be 2x, taking this becomes negative 1. To get x, we divide both sides by 2. x is what? Negative half. Okay? So that's our answer. Negative 2 or and negative half. All right? And when you put it into this equation, you would definitely get negative 2. All right? Do you want us to test that? If we use negative 2, <clears throat> 
we have two in parentheses negative two squared plus five in parentheses negative two. Let us see if it gives us negative two. So that's two. This square is four, and four times two is eight. Plus this times this is a negative ten. All right, and positive times negative is negative, right? So that's eight minus ten, and that is a negative two, which is the same as <clears throat> this. All right, sorry, <clears throat> I have a patch <clears throat> code. All right, so which is the same as this. So our answer is correct. Now let's go to number four. Number four. Okay, number four says if the product of two consecutive positive integers is one one ten, find the integers assuming they are positive. Let x be the smaller integer. Okay, I've done this as equations word problem. When you when you hear things like consecutive uh, integers, consecutive even integers, consecutive odd integers, okay, how do you do it? All right, the first integer which is has been stated so let x be the smaller integer so the first will be x all right that's our first integer since it says two consecutive so the second integer will be what it says the product of two consecutive positive integers the second integer will be what x plus one okay that is what it's going to be it's going to be x plus one all right so we have our first integer as this, our second integer of the, as this. So it says the product of these two is 1, 1, 10. So we have x um, times in parentheses x plus 1 is equal to 1, 1, 10. So, you know, this is uh, this is multiplying this. So that will be, you know, distributing x times this is x squared. x times this is what plus x equal to 1, 1, 10. All right, we take this guy here. So it's likened to a quadratic equation. Taking this here becomes a negative 1, 1, 10. That's 110 equal to 0. So the coefficient here is 1. So 1 times negative 110 is still negative 1, 1, 10. And you know, what are the factors of 1, 1, 10? We have 1. Uh, what else? One can, it's to a factor of this guy here. Yeah, two is a factor. What else? Three uh, a factor. Nine. I mean that two, three is not a factor. Four is not a factor. Five is a factor. Five should go. Uh, what what else can go in this guy? This guy's a very tough guy. Uh, ten can go. Eleven can go. All right. I don't know which of which other bigger numbers right now from the top of my head. All right, but let's see. Uh, in in five is going to go. That's two. Two remainder one, two twenty two, and here in two is going to go five. And the one 55, right? Uh, yes, 55. Okay, 22, 55, and 1, 1, 10. Okay, all right. But if, for me, I've seen my answer, all right? Because what two numbers will I add or subtract that will give me a 1 here? And also when I multiply, it would give me this. It is 10 and 11, all right? So for me, if I stop here, I, won't, I don't think I would go for that. But, you know, because of you, I have to try to factor you know find all the factors of 1 1 10 so if i do a positive 11 negative 10 it's going to give me a positive one and a positive 11 times a negative 10 is going to give me a negative 1 1 10 all right so we have our two factors confirming to our rules all right so we open our two parentheses okay here because x here the coefficient is one we just open our two parentheses and we put plus 10 and negative, no, 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 not plus 10, plus 11, positive 11 and negative 10, okay? That's what we chose, positive 11 and negative 10. So these are the two factors, all right? So we have to solve this, so equal to zero, okay? So let's say this is, let me come to here, please. Equal to zero, 
x minus 10 equal to 0. So this will give you x equal to negative 11, x will be equal to a positive 10. So it says we should assume they are positive. So we can take 10 as our positive answer. So from here, it says find the integers. So if the first integer x is 10, our second integer will be what 10 plus 1, which is what 11. Okay, so these are the two integers. All right. So now, question five. Look at what question five says. It says a contractor wants to construct a rectangular swimming pool. Okay, the width of the pool is five meter less than the length. Whoa. Okay. Now this is some what problem? If the area is one fifty square meter, find the length and width of the pool. Let x be the length. All right. The width of the pool is five meters less than the length. You know, they say let x be the length. So x length will be x. So it says width is five meters less than the length. So x minus five. This is interpretation of this. This is interpretation of this word here. Okay, this expression is interpretation of this word here. It says the width is five meters less than. So it means the length is greater than it. So five meter less than that's x length minus five. All right. It says find the length and width of the pool. Okay. If the area is this. So L times W is equal to A. Okay. Which is uh, what is our L? Our L is x. What is our width? Our width is what? X minus five. And what is our area? Our area is 150. So we have to multiply this. So x times this, that's x squared. x times minus 5, that's negative 5x, equal to 150. Take 150 here. So it becomes x squared minus 5x. Bringing this here becomes a negative 150 equal to 0. Okay? So this is 1. 1 times minus 150 is minus 150. So what are the factors of uh, 150? You have 1, you have uh two you have three you have five you know you have uh you have what again you have six you have uh is can nine go here no you have uh you have ten you have fifteen okay you have other bigger numbers like uh twenty five would go what else would go? 50 also would go. Then 75 would go. Then 150. Okay, you see this? So we have this, I think even 30. 30 should be somewhere here. 30 also is a factor. Okay, so uh, what else do we do? Okay, so we have to find two numbers. We open the parenthesis. Two numbers. And when we subtract or add, it should give us negative 5. And when we multiply, it should give us negative 150. What numbers would that be? I would pick 10 and 15. That's the closest. No, that two numbers again. That's the closest, 10 and 15. So if I do, uh, we need to get negative 5. So if I do negative 15 plus 10, it's going to give me a negative 5. This is where the understanding of your sign rule comes. Because it's going to help you to know what should give you a negative five, what should give you a positive number. Okay, why did I why did I say it should be negative fifteen plus ten? Because when you have a negative and positive number, you subtract. It gives you five. But what sign would five take? Five would take the sign of the bigger number, which is what negative. All right. So that's why we have this negative. All right, so I'll put x, I'll put x, and when you multiply these two, it will give you what? Negative 150. So we are correct. We're good to go. We're good to use these two factors. If you still don't understand quadratic um, this, please watch the video on quadratic equations that I have solved. Okay, so you put your negative 15 and the positive 10. So these are the two factors equal to zero. So you equate this to zero. Equate this to zero. All right. Take this here. It becomes x equal to positive 15 
take this here, it becomes x equal to a negative 10. So these are two values for r, x. So we can decide to use the positive value to check for our value for our r width. Okay, we already know our length. If our length is x, because it says length is x. So if our length is x, what we are with, our width will be what? 15 minus 5, which is what? A 10. So our length is 15. Our width is 10. So this will be our answer. Okay. Now coming to number 6, it says, if the product of two consecutive even integers is 48. The product of two consecutive even integers is 48. Okay, find the integers, assuming they are positive, let's x be the smaller integer. So for this, okay, our first integer will be x. Our second integer will be x plus 2 because it says even integers. Here we did x plus 1 because it says consecutive positive integers. That's, they're just consecutive numbers. So there's an ad repeated addition of 1 and 1. I've treated this earlier on. Okay. So uh, for this even number, you do a plus 2. For odd number also, you do a plus 2. Okay. So these are the first two consecutive even integers. And it says the product of these two is equal to 48. So that's x times x plus 2 is equal to 48. Let us multiply this. This gives us x squared. This gives us what? 2x equal to 48. I take this here. This becomes 2x minus 48 equal to 0. Now, uh, 1 times negative 48. That's a negative 48. So what are the factors? We have 1, 2, uh, 3. We have 4. We have 6. We have 8, uh, 48, we have uh, 12, 24, and 48. Okay? Are we correct? Is there anyone missing? <clears throat> 16, we have 16. Yeah, 16 is missing. 16. Okay, so these are the factors of 48. All right? So now, what two numbers can we use that when we add or subtract will give us positive 2 and when we multiply it should give us what negative 48 what two numbers can you see the two numbers there yes i can see them we can use 6 and 8 when we subtract we can get a 2 and when we multiply we can also get a 48 okay so we do to get a positive 2 we do a positive 8 minus 6 it gives us a positive 2 and positive 8 times minus 6 gives us what? A negative 48. So we have this. Confirm. So we open our two parentheses. Let me do this here. So x plus 8 and x minus 6. All right. So from here we do x plus 8 equal to 0. x minus 6 equal to 0. All right. So we do x equal to, taking this it becomes a negative 8 x here becomes what taking here becomes a positive 6 so our answer is x negative 8 x 6 all right and it but it says assuming they are positive so we pick what 6 the positive so here if x if the first integer is 6 even integer is 6 the second will be 6 plus 2 which is what 8 all right so this is our two answers all right so now let's get on to the final question the final question says the length of a rectangle is 15 centimeters greater than twice its width. Hmm. The area is 125 square centimeter. Find the dimensions. Let x be the width. Okay, so the width is x. All right. Now it says the length of a rectangle is 15 centimeters greater than twice its width. So 15 centimeter greater than, so twice is greater than twice its width. So twice its width is 2 times x. Okay, that's the interpretation of this twice its width. width. Then this 15 centimeter greater than, we do plus 15. Do you see that? So the length is 
15 centimeters greater than twice its width. And remember that L times W is equal to the area. The length times width is equal to the area. And so where our length is 2x plus 15, in parentheses times our width is x. And what is our area? 1, 2, 5. So we distribute this times this guy here gives us 2x squared. This times this guy here gives us what? 15x equal to 125. I'll bring this guy here. It becomes 2. Uh, <coughs> it becomes negative. So that's negative 2, 5. 1, 2, 5 equal to 0. I multiply this two, it gives me what? 250. Okay? Negative 250. All right, when I get to this point, I can decide to use my GED calculator. You can see these values are big. Before we start looking for all the factors here, it can be exhausting. So I have done a video on how to use your GED calculator to get, um, you know, to solve quadratic equations like this using the quadratic formula. Okay, so where you make this on your calculator, you store this as positive A, B as 15, and C as negative 125. Then, you know, you put in your, your formula, your negative B plus or minus in square root, B square minus 4AC over 2A. You know, you put this and, you know, you punch and it just gives you your answer right away. Okay, so that's, you know, to make it fast for you, but... If you want to do it the old-fashioned way, we have to list these factors. But for me, I would just make, I will try to look for something. You know, the question, the GED does, it won't make things very difficult for us, okay? So you can see right from here that if you use 25 times 10, 25 times 10 will give you 250, right? 25 times 10 is going to give us 250, right? So, and if we can... If we do uh, positive 25 and a negative 10, it's going to give us a positive 15, okay? So you can see here, it's easy. We can just use, looking at the number, looking at what is here, we can just quickly do, oh, 25 times 10, instead of listing out all the number, um, the factors. But we can still list out all the factors. All right, we have 1, 2, uh, we have 5, we have 10. We have 15, we have 50, we have 25, sorry, 25 should come here first. We have 50, uh, what else, what else, what else can go? I think 50 then, then 125, then 250. So these are the factors. So you can see we can pick 25 and 10, all right? So these are our two factors, positive 25, negative 10. So I'm going to come up here and do 2x squared, I put my positive 25x, negative 10x, okay, minus 125, equal to 0. I'll factor this 2. Uh, um, 2 and 2, there's no fact, there's no greatest common factor with 2 and 25, okay, but with x here, all right, there's no greatest common factor except 1, okay, you can bring out the 1, and x here and x is common, so you can bring out an x, all right? So you divide by x, that's 1x. You get 2x. Divide by 1x, you get plus 25. And you know that 1 times x is still x, so I can decide to just leave it as just x alone. That's why I said x, okay? Now here, our sign here will be negative. What is common to this two? A five. Okay, the numbers, a five. So we can bring out the five. So in parentheses, what are we going to be left here? This is a negative five. Ten, negative ten divided by a negative five will give us a positive two. Remember, we have an x here, we drop that. Then negative five, that will give us what? A positive 25 equal to zero. So this and this is common. So we have two x plus 25. Then x plus minus 5 equal to 0. So here, I can then equate this to 0. So we can solve for x and equate this to 0. This easily gives me x is equal to 5, positive 5. This will be 2x equal to negative 25. 
divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to negative 25 over 2 and 5. All right, so that is our answer. So it says let x, so our width is 5. So from here, if our width is 5, what will be our length? This will be 2 times 5, right? Which will give us 10. And 10 plus 15 is what? 25. So our length will be what? 25. All right, so that's how we solve quadratic equations word problem. Thank you, thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. And um, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can check our website for summary you no know, study guides, practice questions, the GED formula sheet download. And um, you can also join our Facebook group, our Reddit group, okay, to, you know, ask about the GED. And, um, you know, uh, any questions you have about the GED, you can drop it on the groups. And uh, finally, don't forget, that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Please do give your life to Christ, for he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the one who is going to lead us to heaven at last and give us peace here on earth while we are still living. You know, give us victory over all our battles, be it mental, be it financial, physical, health-wise, marital battles. Jesus will give us victory over them. He would give you victory over them and take all your burdens and give you peace. Okay, take all your sadness, your sorrows and give you joy and beauty. He will do it for you. Come unto him today. All right? So uh, you are blessed and highly favored and lifted up. I wish you success in life and also in your GED test. All right, see you in our next video.